Well, hello everybody. Good morning to this week. Uh, we're here this morning with John Bechtel. Scott is on his way to uh, Arizona. There's a party district convention there. Good morning, John. Hey, good morning, Joe. Good morning. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Uh, in Youngstown, my hometown, visiting the family. And uh, you've been here before. And uh, you're a native of what, Yellow Springs, isn't it? Well, a Buckeye in general. I mean, I got deep roots in Ohio and okay. both in Northern and Southern Ohio, Great. but I'm, I'm living presently in Chicago. Yeah. So glad, glad to be joining you from Ohio and, or from uh, Chicago and trying to pinch hit for, for Scott Hiley today. Big election in Ohio, the city council, five socialists got elected. That's a big thing, huh? Right, it was a, tr a, a tremendous election uh, we had here. Uh, in a lot of ways, it was a repudiation, a, a rejection of the Chicago machine and corporate politics in the city. Mm. Uh, but out of that, the in, in the city council itself, I think there were actually six six socialists. Uh, I, I believe all of them wow. were associated with DSA. Uh, but that's a tremendous development here. Wow. Wow, that's fantastic. And we got a guy elected in Wisconsin, Lasea Whiteberg, to the city council. He beat the chairman. So that's something new too, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, I think that kind of captures the spirit in a lot of these places. You know, people are really looking for something different. They're, they're, they're been, uh, as you pointed out in your article, the socialist moment, you know, people are, are reacting to, um, you know, capitalism and the corruption of the system, and they're looking for something new uh, and different. And uh, uh, I think the ideas of socialism speak to more and more people nowadays. That's right, particularly younger people, uh, you know, the younger generation. Uh, that's, uh, but in order to uh, beat Trump, you need a multi generational movement. And um, I see that uh, Mr. Biden has entered the race. How do you think he's going to do? Well, he comes into the race, uh, you know, as uh, what many people acknowledge as the front runner, you know, status. Uh, right. I think at this point, you know, it's a lot of its name recognition and his association with the Obama administration. Sure, sure. But, so you know, he'll have a challenge. North Carolina, huh? I'm sorry. Go on. I said, they say he's doing well in South Carolina. We'll yeah. see. Yeah. I mean, I think his, his challenge is going to be like all these candidates, you know, how to assemble a very broad coalition of voters, uh, very diverse uh, constituencies. And, you know, he, in his announcement, I think the one thing that he put his finger on was that we're at an extremely dangerous moment, you know, in the nation's history, we face uh, this president who, you know, has ties to fascist uh, and white supremacist groups. And he rightly identified the Charlottesville, um, uh, you know, um, the, the murder of that young woman in the march of these white supremacists in, in uh, uh, Charlottesville as a singular moment, you know, in our history um, and responding to that. But you gotta do more than that. You have to also put forward a vision Right. of where we want to take the country. And I think that's going to be his challenge. Well, good for him. I'm glad he pointed that out. And um, speaking of vision, uh, do you think that the, you know, projects like the Green New Deal and uh, Medicare for All, are, are these capturing the imagination of the broader public? Oh, I think they do. Um, but Trump is saying that they're socialists, social, and and Mitch McConnell said that the, that the Republican Party is going to be a firewall against socialism. You think that's going to you know gain any steam? You know, I don't think that uh, anti-socialist rhetoric and anti-communist rhetoric has the same kind of impact that it did, in particular among younger younger people. Uh, but people are responding to uh, the desperate situation that many working class families face nowadays and also are really well aware of the 
the existential threats that we face, uh, you know, that humanity faces um, with climate, the climate crisis and the ecological crisis. So things like the Green New Deal, they meet the need. They, they, they are on a scale that's necessary to confront the danger that we're faced with. And I think those more and more will capture the imagination of people. They already do, but I think these kinds of really advanced uh, reforms, you know, are going to be things that will help to shape the course of the going forward into 2020. I noticed that AOC, uh, some, I think it was a Kentucky congressman or West Virginia, I forget which, had invited AOC because they said that the Green New Deal was going to take away jobs. And she took him up on the invitation and then he retracted it. <laughs> 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 was scared. She said, yeah, I'm ready to go and talk. You know, let's let's do it. Yeah. <clears throat> the dude, uh, the dude said no. But they're scared. They're scared of those of that uh, brand of, uh, of politics. And then I noticed that Mitch McConnell said that lower um, uh, getting rid of the electoral college and increasing the uh, number of people on the Supreme Court are socialist policies. And so that was a new one on me. I mean, the branding is trying to brand everything as, yeah. as a socialist. And, um, but I think that they're scared of elect electoral reform. And that's kind of a new dimension of um, the uh, politics today that they're really beginning to talk about, you know, fundamentally changing the way the electoral system is uh, structured. And that's overdue, don't you think? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're dealing with an electoral system that uh, has seen very little change, you know, in, in the history of our country, and was actually set up, you know, to more or less uh, prevent the popular will, you know, from uh, expressing itself. Um, yeah. But that's one of the things about this Republican Party. To well, it's been this way for a while. Um, you know, they're they're a party in crisis. They have no solutions for any of these, um, you know, the problems that we face as a country and the problems that we face, you know, in the world today. Their only solution is obstruction of no, of holding on to power. And the only way they can do that is through voter suppression, is through gerrymandering, is through trying to drive a wedge, you know, into the working class and people, you know, to divide people. And they have no answers. Uh, so that's, you know, it's natural that they would actually be trying to use fear, not only uh, in terms of ra racist appeals, but also fear of socialism as a way to c continue in power. Well, they do have one solution now, tax breaks for the super rich. That, oh, that, oh that, thank uh, you for reminding me that. <laughs> <laughs> they say that gets the blood flowing and the economy humming yeah. and on and uh, yeah. So on and uh, so forth. So, um, and they're they're continuing to you know march um, down that uh, a path. Well, they had a town hall in Texas uh, this past week, um, and that was kind of interesting. I I thought that um, a number of the candidates uh, you know did fairly well. Um, um, uh, Mrs. Warren and um, did uh, well. And uh, it doesn't seem like the uh, congressman from uh, Texas, uh, the young guy who everybody says is the Kennedy uh, stand-in, his, his name fails me at the moment. Beto, Beto O'Rourke. Beto, but he, he, he doesn't seem to be gaining much steam though. It's kind of lagging a little bit, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, he, he's challenged like everybody else to come up with a vision, a program, you know. Uh, I think he addresses some of, the, some of the issues of race and inequality in a manner that's, uh, that, that's effective, but you still have to put forward a, a vision and a program that's gonna unite broad swaths of the people. And I don't, I don't think he's quite done, been able to do that yet. Um, I thought that con the the She the People event was it was really in a lot of, well it was a historic event it's the first time that um, people of color sure. women yes. have gathered together and um, you know as a way to 
uh, inject into the process the needs and demands of uh, people of color and women. Um, and I thought the conversation was really interesting. I, uh, and, but this is the kind of process we need, you know, going forward. Various constituency, I know just, I think maybe a, a few weeks ago, the labor movement also had a similar kind of uh, meeting in Florida where a number of the candidates appeared. And so making uh, the candidates respond, you know, to the needs of these various communities is really important going forward. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, in the course of uh, this campaign, the uh, party is uh, having its 31st convention. And uh, we're, I guess, coming towards the end of the pre-convention period. How do you think it's going? What, what, what are some of the big issues that you think we need to in, engage more in? Uh, well, I think, um, you know, there's, there's always uh, an interesting discussion when you get communists or anybody together, you know, it's a wide variety of opinions on different things and far from everybody having the same opinion, you know, you get a, a you know, a real vigorous debate, you know, about a lot of these ideas, including our strategic policy, you know, to defeat the extreme right and uh, you know, how we see that unfolding. Um, so that's, I think, uh, one discussion which, you know, there'll be continue to be, you know, a lot of debate about. Um, although I obviously, you know, I don't think there's any question about uh, the, you know, how dangerous this administration is and what we need to do to defeat him. Um, so I think that's, that's a really important thing. There's a lot of animated discussion around the Green New Deal and Medicare for all and, you know, how we get from here to there uh, on those and other issues. Uh, so I'm, I'm really excited so far about the discussion and uh, looking and forward. About the need to, some are calling for the reestablishment of the Communist International. <laughs> and they want to do it now, not, yeah. uh, not, not, not later. Yeah, well, what's your take? What's your take on that one, Joe? Uh, I think that um, you know that concept uh, was a, a useful one at at one moment in uh, time, but I think that the uh, complexity of the working class movement in each particular country precludes the uh, ability to. Um, uh, directed from a international center. You know, I think each, each party, each working class has to, you know, define its own path and, uh, and work it, you know. And uh, so maybe if the concept was a little bit different, maybe if it was more, you know, uh, autonomous and devolved and that kind of thing, at some point it might be a useful idea. You know, I think that with the issue of uh, the internet. Uh, I think that there's a lot of room for common work amongst the parties uh, in video, you know, and sharing uh, images uh, and translating in, and coordinating online social media. You know, that would be a tremendous thing if it could happen. And it doesn't need an international to, uh, uh, to do it, joint publishing, that those kinds of things would, would be, uh, very, very uh, helpful, both for the parties and for the international trade union movement, you know, because struggles are more and more international and you got to find ways of coordinating activity without infringing on the national rights of each particular country. So that's how, that's how I see it. Um, there is, of course, uh, as you mentioned, this debate around the anti-right strategy, and some people see it as getting in the way of focusing on big business and the anti-monopoly, uh, you know, movement. And, and they think that it uh, uh, creates illusions about uh, supporting capitalists, you know, and, uh, and so there's that kind of, uh, of fear. Uh, but to me, it seems like the answer is not to get rid of the anti-right strategy, but to fight more and more for working class you know, imprint on it to, to raise the role of the trade unions and the working people 
put forward their demands and uh, so on. Uh, uh, and if you do that, then you shouldn't worry about who you are aligned with. Uh, I think that was the position that Lenin took uh, in two tactics and it worked in the fight against the Tsar and it should work in the fight against Trump, it seems to me. I may be wrong, what do you think? Oh, no, I agree with you. I think, uh, you know, we, the, the whole uh, thrust of building independent political action uh, on, on behalf of the working class and, and its allies um, is the thing that we have to focus our, our attention to. Um, we, we do have the strategic policy. We see the uh, right danger um, as the major, the major impediment to social progress at this very moment. Um, and yeah. once, once we're able to, the, this broad movement including sections of the capitalist class who, who, are, who are not in agreement with the Trump administration and the extreme right. Once you know, we're able to defeat these forces, that's gonna shift the entire balance uh, and, and create a whole new terrain of struggle in this country and open up many new possibilities, not only for the working class uh, people's movement, but also the left, the socialist movements, communists and, and so on. So we'll be in a whole different situation but these things are dialectically intertwined. The fight against corporations. Well, some people say you against... never defeat them until you have a social revolution. I mean, because their posture is so strong, so deeply embedded in the Supreme Court and Congress and the presidency, state legislatures, you name it. So, um, um, but I think that, um, you know, that issue of, uh, is also not a static one, you know, there, there are levels of, of defeat and, uh, and the movement is constantly changing and evolving and is a very, very dynamic process. Well, we gotta go in just a minute, but I wanna ask you a question. Should the Democrats impeach Trump? That's been an issue of debate, both in our party and in the country, what's your take? Yes or no? Oh, I, I think they they should and they 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 will. <laughs> I'm going to predict that um, because what this administration has done, um, what Trump did, um, are high crimes and misdemeanors um, for sure. And we're only seeing the tip of the iceberg. And I think uh, I think rightfully so. The, the the process, investigative process, has to continue. I mean, the Mueller investigation was only one thing. Uh, and by the way, the obstruction continues, you know, with the this administration, um, not only um, in, in Barr, Bill Barr and so on, but, you know, already they're obstructing now trying to, uh, with these subpoenas, you know, of his aides. So I think this investigation, you know, will continue. It's going to continue now in Congress. And I think they're going to amass the, the necessary, uh, evidence that's necessary to impeach him and you you at a certain point you have to draw the line and say you know that this kind of uh, criminal behavior is intolerable you know from presidency and you have to whether or not it you know the senate acts that's that's on the republicans really but the democrats i think are going to make a statement should make a statement i say yes they it should be impeached but it just can't be that it has to be people in the streets, on the campuses, in the communities, mobilized, pressuring, fighting for it, you know, because if we just leave it in the hands of the politicians, um, you know, who knows what, what will happen. So there needs to be a mass movement. And, it, and that's a concern that the mass movement seems to have ebbed a little bit uh, since the last election. Uh, and uh, that needs to be heightened, you know, uh, but I think it, it will happen. You know, it's a, it's a very dynamic process that we're in. Well, thanks for sitting in for Scott. Great well, talking to you. Yeah. You're always welcome back and um, have a great weekend, John. Yeah, you too, Joe, and to all of our viewers. All right, happy May Day. Happy May Day. Take care, bye-bye. And meeting, couldn't find it. <laughs>